Another major winter storm is headed for the Midwest this weekend. Could a nor'easter only be a week away? Temperatures begin to plummet for Thanksgiving and look to stick around for a while. And the winds around our polar vortex have almost completely stalled. Let's talk about what that means moving forward. It's November 26th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. We have a lot to talk about in this video, but the main focus is gonna be these next two snowstorms. The first one that's supposed to go through the Midwest this weekend that could affect Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee, Indianapolis, Columbus, Cleveland, tons of major cities and then potentially right after it, a nor'easter setup, and we know what cities that could affect. We're talking anywhere from DC to Baltimore, Philly, New York City, Boston. The confidence in this Midwestern snowstorm is high, and the confidence in the nor'easter, of course, isn't as high just because it's a little farther out, although this event is within six days on the GFS now. Our European model also sees the snow setup out east, except for it brings that snow a little bit more inland, which I know would frustrate a lot of people up and down the I-95 corridor. It's gonna be a close call, so let's take a look at all all the latest updates. We currently have a storm system moving through the upper Midwest. This has been dropping some snow in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan. This is going to continue to move out to the east as we go through today, and with it, the lake effect snow is going to turn on. We have a lot of cold air that's going to be rushing over those warmer lake waters. This does look to be a west-northwesterly wind for most. Again, it's always hard to tell where the lake bands are going to set up, but we're going to see some good snow along western Michigan, and then stretching from Cleveland, likely all the way up to Watertown, New York. The Euro is expecting anywhere from four to nine inches up and down the west Michigan coast. It's now thinking we could get up to 10 10 inches in Cleveland. I think this is a little bit high. That lake effect snow may be a little bit out to your east, but hey, that's the latest from the Euro. And then moving up the coast towards Watertown, you can see it's kind of sporadic. Again, it depends where the lake band set up. You could end up with an inch of snow. You could end up with six inches to a foot of snow if you're situated under one of those lake bands. I'm going to go over the temperature anomalies in a second, but remember, as we push into tomorrow for Thanksgiving, it's going to get much cooler. So if you're a little bit warm out east, believe me, get your jackets out for Thanksgiving. We're going to see widespread five to 20 degrees below average. It really depends depends where you are, but most people are going to be much colder than they were today. So what happens as we move through Thanksgiving and after Thanksgiving? Here's the 28th and then the 29th. We start to see our polar jet buckle once again up here through the northern Rockies, and then you start to get a lot of moisture forming in the plains because you have all of this warm, moist air to the south interacting with this very cold air from the north. So this would be as we get into Saturday morning. We could have snow flying through Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, moving into Nebraska, Minnesota. We could have another round of snow. It may not be too heavy. Right now, central to southern Minnesota looks like anywhere between two to six inches of snow. Although if this does shift even a little north, those totals are going to go up. So here we go through Saturday, getting into Saturday evening. The storm begins to shift out to the east, and now we've had snow falling in Omaha, Des Moines. The snow is moving into Chicago, western Michigan, Milwaukee, Madison, Wisconsin, and these could be some pretty decent snow totals. I'd also watch down here as this low pressure begins to move off into the north and east. We may have a severe threat down here once again through portions of Dixie Alley. Getting into Sunday morning, the snow continues to move off into the north and east, and we're going to see likely some snowflakes falling in inner New England. And the whole state of Michigan right now looks to receive a lot of snow. There's a question about Detroit. You can clearly see a little bit of warmth trying to push into the Detroit area. I know people here are going to be upset if this happens because a lot of times Michigan gets snow, Detroit misses out. I still think Detroit's going to be fine though, because especially on the front end of this system, it does look like this is going to be mostly snow for you guys. So what happens as we get into early next week? Well, our jet stream starts setting up very nicely for a potential northeastern storm, maybe even a nor'easter. And this is not out there in la la land crazy time. This is about six days out right now and we're seeing the possibility on the Euro for snow through Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago again. This whole area that just got snow could see a second round and this storm is going to want to move off into the east. Now this is the 06Z of the Euro and it looks like our jet stream has actually shifted slightly to the south so it may be beginning to agree with the GFS that this snow is headed for the coastal mid-Atlantic and New England. Here was the 00Z. We weren't seeing as much snow here and here's our polar jet jet right through Pennsylvania there. You can see the jet actually came down a little bit farther south and we're only talking maybe 20 miles, but these small movements over the next four to five days are going to make a big difference in if the mid-Atlantic sees snow, especially the coastal mid-Atlantic sees snow and if coastal New England sees snow, because again, it's very hard to get snow in this area, especially earlier in winter because you have that warm air that's moving off the Atlantic. But if our polar jet can buckle a tiny bit more down to the southeast, it's going to be snow. It's not going to be rain. So a good sign for you guys out there. Don't lock it in though. We're still going to see a lot of adjustments throughout the runs. And just so you have an idea of what the GFS sees, 
here we go, about six days out. This is snow moving up through the mid-Atlantic and New England here. Might be a little rough for Jersey on this GFS run, but again, it gives you guys a really good chance for snow. And just for fun, I'll show you what the GFS snow totals see right now, because again, we're really only talking six days out, still just outside of forecasting range, but I'll show you what we could see if we were to see this type of scenario pan out here as we get into the beginning and middle of next week. I'm sure this would make a lot of people happy. We're talking about a foot in DC, 14 inches in Baltimore, 18 inches in Philly, 17 inches in New York City. We've got a foot across Long Island. You've got a ton of snow up there in Boston, almost a foot. So yeah, this would be a great outcome for you guys. I've said a bunch. I think this is the year we get one or two big nor'easters. We've been in quite a snow drought out here. We haven't seen a true nor'easter in quite a while. So is this one going to be it? I'm not sure yet, but at least we're not looking at something that's 250 plus hours out. This is starting to get closer to forecasting range. So we're going to have to watch how the models adjust over the next few days. If this doesn't happen, I still think we have more opportunities and not even in the long range, but potentially in the short to medium range. After that moves out, we're getting into the middle towards the end of next week, December 4th, December 5th. The GFS sees more snow for the upper Midwest. A lot of these models do see a ton of clipper systems for the upper Midwest. I think cities like Fargo, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Madison could see a lot of snow before December's over. I mean, we could get a lot of clippers. These cities, in my opinion, could see upwards of 20 to 30 inches of snow in December, depending on the winter storm tracks, of course, because you could have some of these storms go just south or just north of you. But it's a pretty good snow track for the upper Midwest as we move forward in time here. And then getting out towards La La Land, you could see, again, more clippers, more snow for the upper Midwest. This would be trying to push down into the Ohio Valley. And then, hey, look at that. The GFS gives you another nor'easter type setup. So again, there's going to be opportunities here. And then look at that. Again, another one. This is the end of the run. So don't get too excited, but what I'm saying is we have a pattern that supports some snow up and down the East Coast. So we just need the cold air and moisture to link up at the right time with one of these systems to make it happen. And I'm still confident it will. Here's a look at our 10 day surface temperature anomalies, meaning over the next 10 days, this is what the European is thinking for temperatures in the US, well below average for most of us. Obviously, the West is under a little bit of a ridge, but again, this is what we were expecting moving into December. A cold start, potentially a very long cold stretch through December is still on the table. Here's our six to 10 day forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. Again, most of us are cold, a little bit warm though, down in the Southeast and our eight to 14 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. This is all the way through December 9th and we're remaining average to below average in the Plains, out through the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. And with all that cold air combined with this six to 10 day precipitation outlook and the eight to 14 day, that's a good sign. We're gonna see a lot of snow flying here over the next couple of weeks. And I suspect throughout December, actually, I think this pattern will continue up through Christmas. Our polar vortex winds are very close to stalling. We've had our sudden stratospheric warming event, and believe it or not, we have not felt the effects of this yet. The real effects of this can take two to three weeks to be felt in the States, which is why looking forward, when could we see this cold air? Well, maybe in the time frame leading up to Christmas. And that combined with what is still projected to be a phase eight MJO leading up into Christmas. Phase eight MJO, cold and snowy for a lot of people, especially stretching from the Northern Plains towards the East Coast. This is looking like a wild setup through December. That's why I've been saying through my video, I think this cold pattern is going to stretch out through Christmas and we're going to have a lot of opportunities for snow here. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I post videos like this every single morning, and right after I post, I hop on live stream to answer all of your weather related questions. Again, I appreciate you watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video or the live stream.